The A6 Court FF2 is billed as a monster truck for your feet on the tennis court, but does what's inside under the hood of this shoe match up with the marketing hype? Well, let's tear it down and find out. When I was tearing away the upper from the midsole, I was most interested in checking out the sock liner on the Court FF2. It's a modified three-piece tongue. It is a slipper tongue. However, the polyurethane on the outer surface of the upper does break apart to kind of create a traditional three-piece tongue, but with also a sock liner underneath of it. Now, it's only a two-piece upper. There's only two layers. They're both stitched into the midsole. The most outer layer is all polyurethane. The laces of these shoes are a little thin for my taste. I like a beefier lace. I feel like it just gives you a little more dialed in and uniform tightness of the shoe. When we did the Dremel test on the upper, we found about a millimeter of damage, pretty much the exact same as the Gel Resolutions 8. Now, when I was playing in these shoes in the heat, I was wondering how they were able to breathe so well. And the reason is, is there's really only two layers and both layers of the upper are actually pretty thin. There's not much padding up here. And as you can see, once you take the upper off the shoe, you can actually see through the tongue. So there is a lot of air channels in the upper, but that does come with a little bit of a sacrifice with less padding. Now moving on to our insole, midsole, and outsole. The removable insole was nothing special. It was pretty much the same as the Gel Resolution 8, just a thin removable insole. Nothing extra padding wise like you get with some of the Nike shoes. The last of the Court FF2s is slightly inflared. It is still a pretty decently wide shoe. I have a pretty wide foot and I didn't have any trouble breaking these in. However, with it being a slipper tongue, a little tighter of an entry into the shoe, somebody with a pretty wide foot better throw some tennis balls in here overnight just to stretch that sock liner out a little bit. And with the little bit of an inflared last, nothing major, but just a tiny bit of inflaring, you might have some issues if your foot is extremely wide. So as far as stitched in insole material, you do get a really nice padded stitched in insole. A lot of shoe companies do not pay attention to the stitched in insole. They just throw a little piece of EVA in there, ethyl vinyl acetate. This is a nice beefy insole, which I really like. Now moving on to the profile of the shoe. When I open these up from left to right, I noticed that on the heel, on the midsole of the heel, there is a double stacked pad, one layer of EVA, and then one layer of A6 gel. Now, if you look in the forefoot of the shoe, you have a green gel. In the back of the shoe, it's blue, and in the front of the shoe, it's this green material. Now, the green material really only goes under the ball of your foot, under your big toe joint. It doesn't extend all the way laterally in the shoe. It's just under the big toe joint. It's about the same consistency as the gel in the back. It might be a little bit less dense. Now, remember, after a while, these are going to bottom out. So they might make a difference in the, maybe the first few weeks to month of the shoe. But if you play tennis a lot, especially on hard courts, your foot will eventually bottom these out. So these aren't made for durability. They're more made for the beginning wear of the shoe, not more made for the end of the shoe's life. Now the Court FF2 does feature the Trustix system as well as the Twistra system. Now the Twistra system is underneath the foot. It's right where the shank should be in the shoe, right under your arch. Now I did find a little bit more arch support with the Court FF2s versus the Gel Resolution 8. And I think that's just because you have basically the shank on the outside of the shoe that comes up in into your arch into the midsole, which I really like. It does give the shoe a lot of stability. And I think that's where most of the stability came from when I was playing in them. Now, if you look on the lateral flange, there is a piece of that twist dress system out on the lateral flange. And I wanted to see, does that really connect with the rest of it? And when I cut through the shoe with the saw, find out that this does actually connect under the shoe. So just kind of like the Wilson Amplifield 2.0s, you have a shank that goes all the way up on the outside, lateral side on the lateral flange of the shoe, comes all the way under and up on the medial arch. So you're getting a really nice cage-like feeling in the shoe. And that's another reason why the shoe resists bending so much, resists twisting so much, and just gives you an all around solid, secure feel on a hard or a clay court. And just like the Gel Resolution 8, ASICS has found it better to put the shank-like materials, the kind of more scaffolding of the shoe on the outside. It makes it more comfortable on the inside and you can fit more foam in the midsole. The outsole durability test using our Dremel highest grit sandpaper for 10 seconds. 
showed about a millimeter of damage, which is what I expected because the outsoles of these are very similar to the A6 Gel Resolution 8, which showed a pretty similar result. So I would say the thing that makes the A6 Court FF2 as stable as it is, is how much outsole and midsole comes up over your foot when you actually step into it. When your foot goes in, you have all this material that's cradling your foot. Now, the heel counter isn't as stiff and the upper isn't as beefy. However, it has more outsole material and midsole material coming up over your foot on the inside and outside than any other shoe that I've play tested or torn down. And I think that's why you feel like you're in an armored tank on the tennis court when you're in these. So I think that if you're looking for a shoe that is the ultimate in stability, that also doesn't have a lot of break in time and you don't have an extra wide foot, this is a phenomenal shoe for both hard and clay court play. If you have an extremely wide foot, you're going to want to look somewhere else. Any shoe that has a sock liner and if you have an extremely wide foot, it's not going to be a good combination unless it's New Balance and you can get something in a 40. I think if you were playing tennis in the early 2000s, your ears probably started twitching when you saw this shoe as it reminds a lot of people of some of the older versions of the Adidas Barricade and Novak Djokovic used to use the Adidas Barricade. So I think some of that technology in those shoes, the last design may have been brought over from Adidas to this version of Asics. And that's great because Adidas isn't making the barricade right now. And I think as long as part of the barricade is still in the zeitgeist of tennis, I'm pretty happy because I think if you played during the early 2000s or even mid 2000s, chances are at some point you put that shoe on your foot. So let me know in the comments down below, are you a fan of sock liner tennis shoes or are you like me and you like more of a traditional three piece tongue? So we've got the teardown of the Nike VaporX and VaporX Knit coming up. We also have play test, performance review, and teardown of the Zuno Wave Exceed 4, as well as the Adidas Soul Court Boost. So if you don't want to miss those videos, click the subscribe button and notification bell. Hope everyone has a great day, great night, wherever you're tuning in from. And I'll see you next time.